Hello and welcome to a special Marty's Mashbox Makeovers. Today I will be showcasing my first five models which have never been featured in a video yet. I started restoring models about 12 months ago but never got round to recording a full length video at the time. This video is going to feature scraps of unseen footage and still photography that was created when I was first experimenting with restoring Matchbox cars. So without further ado, let me introduce my very first car, the Thames Estate car, built in 1959. I bought this on eBay from the original owner, who turned out to live just around the corner from me. He admitted to me that he had painted it when he was a kid and wanted it to look like a British rail vehicle for his train set. Unfortunately, I have no footage of me restoring this vehicle, so instead here's some modern footage showing it in its current state. Remember, this is my first model ever. When I finished painting it, I then touched up some details using silver paint, door handles, grille and headlights, etc. This was a tricky model to start with, due to the fact that the body was in two different colours. The underside had no rivets, so it was a simple case of separating the chassis from the base by flexing the body with a small flat bladed screwdriver. This first vehicle I chose to paint the wheels light grey to try and match the originals. I struggled to find a standard colour off the shelf that would match. I ended up using this uh, pressure pack of Tamiya colour named Coral Blue. For the record, this is the only model that I have painted with pre-mixed colour out of a spray can. To display the model I bought myself a reproduction box. Here's a collage I made of before and after photographs. I didn't spend too much time on the windscreen on this model. I just gave it a wash and a quick spray of varnish. I must say I was quite lucky as there was no obvious dings or dents or bent pillars in this model. Now here is my second model. I also bought this from the same guy I bought the first one from. This is a Vauxhall Cresta made in 1956. Once again, apart from the shabby paintwork, it's not too bad. Here is what it looks like today. I managed to mix my own paints for this one and match the cream roof and also the cherry red body. This being my second model, I was still experimenting with my spray painting and the finish on the roof and bonnet has a slight orange peel effect. You may notice that the toe hitch was missing the ball. I didn't even think about fixing this at the time. This was the first model where I had to drill rivets out. In those days I put the base back on by using blobs of araldite and then colour matched them to the body by hand painting them. Here you can see I made an attempt to spruce this vehicle up by painting some of its features silver. And you may note that this early vehicle did not come with a windscreen. Once again I painted the tyres light grey and also highlighted the end of the axles with silver paint. You can tell this is an old vehicle as the ends of the axles have been crimped rather than formed into the domed headed ends found on the later models. I quite like the slight overspray of the cream onto the red. It makes it look like it came out of the factory like that. This is how I displayed this model, featuring another reproduction box. Here's another before and after collage. I just love this little model. The colours and the style reminds me of a car that maybe Mr Magoo would have driven. So that was my second ever restoration. Now let's move on to look at my third. This is a Ford Thames van. It's a Singer sewing machine service vehicle and came out in 1958. I have some limited footage of me restoring this vehicle but before I show you the footage Let's just have a quick close up look at it now. This is a beautiful vintage green and with the red lettering it just makes for an outstanding looking vehicle. The casting on the rear doors was a little bit average. Apart from that this was in great order. This was the second of my first vehicles that had the base riveted on. I hadn't mastered removing the axles yet. If I had have done I would probably have shortened the front axle as it seemed over length. This is a short piece of footage that I took after I had undercoated it. Because I wasn't going to remove the axles, I masked off the wheels before painting. 
Here you can see the first recorded footage of me using an airbrush. I was experimenting by holding the model by a nail that I had super glued inside the cabin. These were reproduction decals that I ordered online. They came with others for my next model. Here I'm applying the decals using my wife's eyebrow tweezers. This is some rare footage of me putting on a transfer the correct way first time round. During my early days of video production I was still trying to get the camera angle right and often failing. The next stickers that I put on were the word singer. This was an absolute nightmare. After I put them in the water to detach from the backing sheet, every single letter individually detached and floated around. I had to fish them out and place them on one at a time, trying to line them up as accurately as possible. It took me ages. You can see the word singer made of individual letters is not exactly straight. This is what it looked like when I'd finished it. I do wish I had painted the rear bumper silver. All in all though, a nice looking model, with part of its charm being its simplicity. My fourth model today is the Carrier Refuse Collector that came out in 1957. This is another very simple vehicle, basically just the body with wheels. This is a reproduction rear door, as the original one was missing when I received the model. This is a view of the underside showing the hollow cabin. And this is what the back looked like before I fitted the reproduction door. The cabin roof on this model was pushed down a fair bit. Also the A pillars were missing along with the cabin centre brace. This was the first time I experimented with the baking soda and super glue repair method. What I am doing here is making a stalagmite from the bottom of the A pillar to the corner of the cabin. I am alternately using super glue and a sprinkling of baking soda to build up the A pillar. This was my first attempt at this and sure it looks a real mess. I've improved since then. After I'd filled in both sides, I used my hobby file set to file them into better shape. At this stage, I was still not sure that this method would work. After a heap of filing, it finally turned out where I felt that it was acceptable and could now be repainted. You can see that I have again masked off the wheels for this model. Now for a more detailed look at the reproduction rear door. This part was just a force fit and once it was pressed into place it was not going anywhere. This is a before and after shot obviously. And now the obligatory carousel footage. I am not happy with how the centre brace of the cabin turned out. I cheated a little bit and simply glued a small nail into position to represent the centre brace. I may revisit this model one day and make it look more original. Now last but not least is the Ford Corsair. This model came out in 1965. Again, a very basic model but uh, I do like the lines on this one and also the vintage colour. As you can see I went the extra mile and painted the grille and headlights on this one. The marks on the roof here are caused by the roof rack that originally I didn't even know existed. 
this was the first model that I accidentally drilled right the way through the bonnet. You can see the mark on the front of the car. I will probably redo it again sometime soon. When I bought this model it was just the car, but looking at the box art I realised there was a boat missing. It is surprisingly well detailed and is made of sturdy plastic. No it is surprisingly well detailed and is made of sturdy plastic. No doubt very similar to the original. The roof rack itself is quite flexible and can be forced over the roof to engage inside the window openings. The model boat then simply attaches to the roof rack. There, this model is finally complete after who knows how many years. I bet the original boat went missing within the first couple of weeks. This is the first model where I used colour matched M2 button headed screws. This is great because it means that when I want to fix it in the future I can just unscrew the screws and easily separate the base from the body. So far this is the only model where I've painted the rear lights red. This is because when I finished it I noticed that there was a chip on the left hand rear light. So I just covered it up using red paint as I had none of the original colour left. I love the way that this model sits. It seems as though the boat has real weight to it and is forcing the car's rear to sit low on the road. I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video of my first five restorations. As you can see it was a learning experience and I must say that I am learning new things with every restoration I do. This selection of vehicles was a great introduction to the restoration of matchbox cars. Thank you all for watching, rest assured that there will be more Marty's Matchbox Makeovers coming in the near future.